Welcome. Today we're going to tackle a simple load flow analysis. So the first thing we're going to do is to draw a single line diagram. Okay? So let's provide here a power grid. This is our power grid and a bus. Let's connect the power grid to the bus, okay? And let's provide also a two winding transformer, okay? And at the bottom of the two winding transformer, let's provide it a bus. Let's connect the primary of the transformer going to the bus and the secondary of the transformer going to the bus as well. Then, below this bus, we're going to provide an induction motor. And let's connect this induction motor to the bus. Okay, now it is connected. So, first we're going to provide the information on our two winding transformer with that let's just double click this symbol okay so let's go to the rating of the transformer here we're going to assign the primary voltage to be 34.5 kV and the secondary voltage to be 4.16 kV okay so Let's assign the rating of the transformer to be 5 MBA. Okay. After that, here, we can fill up the information for the type and class of the transformer. For the type of the transformer, we can select liquid field, dry type, or liquid field. Since the transformer is ANSI standard, we have here the liquid field C57.12. So here we're going to utilize only the liquid field, okay? For the subtype of the transformer, let's provide here the mineral oil. The class, let's say O and A or o, oil and air natural. And the temperature rise is uh, 65. After that, let's go to the impedance of the transformer if we don't have the information for the transformer if we don't have the information for impedance the accelerations and other details we can use ETAF values we have here the typical impedance and the X ratio of the transformer just press this button and ETAF will automatically filling up the information for the person impedance, the XR ratio, the RX ratio, etc. Just press OK. If you see from here, ATAP automatically provide the voltage of this bus, the bus one, which is 34.5 kV. And on the secondary side of the transformer, the bus 2, which is 4.16 kV. The next thing we're going to do is to provide the information for the power grid. Here for load flow analysis, we'll just only tackle the operation mode of the power grid. Okay, so I will give you a brief uh, function for this four operation mode. Let's start on the voltage control. For the voltage control, this mode makes power grid adjust its in bar output to control the voltage. A voltage control power grid is base loaded, meaning it's a fixed megawatt with an automatic voltage regulator or AVR controlling the terminal voltage to a constant value. While for the M-bar control, this mode is a base loaded. It's also a fixed megawatt with a fixed M-bar generation. There's no MBR action, EVR rather, action to this mode. 
third one we have the pf control or the power factor control the megawatt output will be fixed value also the power factor will also be specified ATAP calculates the out invar of the grid into the system. So the fourth one, we have here the swing. This mode will take up the slack of the power flows in the system. The magnitude and angle of the voltage at the power grid terminals will remain at the specified operating values. So please note that this must be at least once swing machine for power grids or generators to be selected as the reference machine for the entire system okay so in our simple single line diagram we have only one power grid here so we're going since this is necessary to have a swing so we're going to select a swing here and just press okay then let's fill up the information on the induction motor just double click this symbol okay let's go to the nameplate of the motor if we have if we don't have this two option here to provide the information we can fill directly the required information here or we go to the library in our case we're going to select the library here okay since the secondary side voltage rating of the transformer is 4.16 so we're going to select this 4.16 and from that we can choose a different rating of the induction motor here in our case we're going to choose 1000 horsepower press ok and here we have the value already we have 1000 horsepower and it up automatically assign the value of the power factor and the efficiency for the for the different loading for the 100 percent for the 75 percent and 50 percent we have also here the value for the person slip and the speed of the motor we have the rpm here okay and just press OK. Now, the single line diagram is ready to run for the load flow analysis. By the way, what is the purpose of having load flow analysis? Load flow analysis is used to determine the real and reactive power flow. It's also used to determine the voltage at each bus, the voltage dip on each feeder, or voltage drop on each feeder, the bus bar loadings, the transformer loadings, and the system power factor. Okay, so these are the that that, that was the poor that were the purpose of why we are having load flow analysis. Okay. On the left side on our screen we have the P and Q here so to run for load flow just select this one okay and on the uppermost right side we have also the symbol here the P and Q okay so let's start to run the load flow analysis just press this okay so the output file name let's type here LF for the load flow just press OK And we have here, as we can see, we have here the values for our power and the voltage in percentage for each bus. So we have here the uh, <coughs> active power, which is the 797.7, and the reactive power, which is 341 coming from our power grid. Okay. So, from our display options, we can, we can modify what we have seen in the screen, okay? In our case, we're going to, to show the KBE and Amper. 
as well as the power factor as well as also we're going to select the uh, the branch losses from here just select just select this one and this press okay okay so here as you can see and it's very difficult by seeing this very difficult what are these no, uh, figures here so we'll provide here the unit by pressing this one here unit show okay okay so now we have here the units already so we can from here we have the kv the ampere the power factor and this value this value here this is the branch losses of the system okay so as we can see bus one is we have the 100 percent of the uh nominal voltage while for the 4.16 kv bus or the bus two we have the 99.44 percent of the nominal voltage